and welcome to another live code hangout. We are working on the Western Friend website. I've got a pull request in progress. We can take a look here on GitHub. The task currently is to use PayPal as our payment processor, where previously we were using Braintree. Uh, this pull request is sort of all or nothing, so it's kind of a massive one. When I have a pull request of this size, it, <clears throat> it's really risky. Any small, I mean, there's just a high risk of that, the of abandonment or failure, but since it's an all or nothing switch, I don't know of a good strategy to do this incrementally. I'm sure there are some options. Nonetheless, we've worked through a lot of the details and the main um, remaining changes are to get these tests to, to pass. Essentially, I haven't uh, refactored the tests as I've gone, so every, all the tests are more or less failing. Uh, well, not all of them, but we'll run them locally to take a look. 200 tests across the project. A number of these in the payment bookstore or store module. The PayPal module doesn't have any tests currently, so that'll be a place we'll have to start. Good place to start. So we're going to use uh, ChatGPT and or Copilot. <clears throat> so here we have a few fa failures already. And I can go to the log here and uh, it'll be the same failure log. A couple deprecation warnings. And then some places where I've not remove the brain tree code. Let's find that. Oops, I darn it. Ah. So yeah, we don't need this anymore. In fact, the whole donation model is gonna get removed. The whole donation package. Let's do it. So yeah, let's take a quick look. We're removing a little bit, a few more lines than we're adding, but uh, it'll change now. Yeah, okay. So yeah, uh, essentially it's not a clear report, but uh, we can just work through these one at a time. Can't remember if my test explorer is not gonna work with Django tests. At least not that I recall. Django test runner, which is a bummer. Django test runner, 15,000. Yeah, this is what I'm after because the uh, the test explorer is really helpful. I can it shows me the test in a file and gives me these little ways of running it in debug mode. Let me see what this is. Django hacked. Great. It just sounds suspect. Yeah, what I'm talking about is this testing environment. Nothing really I would trust. <laughs> All right, so we have less than stellar experience. This test runner is nice. Let's go ahead and, and write some tests. And so what we can do is just run the uh, test PayPal, for example. Yeah, <laughs> just blasted that way. So. So we won't maybe necessarily have a donate page anymore. Do maybe not. It's a bit late in the game. We'll figure out where we'll put it with these raw subscriptions.
So none of these really work. So essentially, yeah, removing these test cases that are no longer relevant, it's going to be good. Process brain tree recurring. Not doing that anymore. So we will need to fix these books order test cases and payments. If it says brain tree anymore, not correct. Basically, all of this is not correct anyway. We're not using the nonce, we're not using the brain tree payment flow. You know, really, I just gotta. Look at these from scratch. We do have these views. Um, we're not really storing any of the subscription details in our system anymore. Just a, an extreme. the opposite end of the spectrum where we had a lot more control over the subscription flow just went into like everything in uh, PayPal so PayPal does give you the opportunity to have more control but it takes a lot of development and uh, we're so far into this project I don't have the kind of capacity anymore to rebuild all of this for PayPal. It's an order that comes out of the order factory. I can see that, so my pie can't see it, that's all right. But at least I'm explicit about it, and then things work downstream, all right. Oh yeah, so whether these will work is another thing, uh, but at least we've cleared up a bunch more code. Now we'll add more, we'll add some tests back in. Minus 2,900. Minus 3,600. I mean, people just don't know the sometimes magnitude of decisions and whimsical decisions, uh, last minute decisions, how the cost it can introduce to a project. When the editor decided to switch from Braintree, which had been under development for months and had a lot of work had been done in uh, to implement Braintree uh, payments in this project and then say, no, we're switching back to PayPal. I don't have a good feeling about Braintree. I mean, yeah, I get it. Brain tree it does feel a bit sketch. In some ways, it's the developer experiences, and I think the user experience is better than PayPal or modern. But uh, the organization is invested in PayPal and has a lot of their bookkeeping and stuff already there. But it's a bit entitled, and frankly, to just make a decision like that, a rash decision in the project timeline when we're supposed to be launching. We were supposed to have launched in August, and in, in a post-launch. Uh, 
where we're in staging, which is like where you're basically getting ready to go live. It's not even you're not supposed to do much development to say, to call make a call like that. It was a bit like on, I don't know, just surprising, and it has led to quite a lot of, of rework. In the long run, maybe it's you know who knows. But you gotta have you can't just expect people to kind of jump to your whims on on like projects like this when you had months to have made that decision and made that call years actually because this project has been under development for several years where we've had time to look at braintree look how it works test it out in the uh, sandbox environment see if it would make sense from a um you know stakeholder perspective how it would align with bookkeeping we've had so much time to do that and to do that in the final weeks of a project it was like very surprising to say the least very frustrating and it's kind of this sense of entitlement I've been seeing in, when I've been doing development for like particularly in Quaker organizations like small nonprofits they just expect you just to kind of do uh, they don't understand sometimes people don't understand the costs that are involved in development and making these changes you know if you were having somebody help develop your house or like an addition to your house you would sort of get a better perspective of the physical labor involved but when it's just information work and software and just seems so easy and arbitrary to make a decision like that but it's not it has a human cost involved So it looks like we don't need these payment helpers at all. We will need to render the payment processing page, so I'm not gonna go. Well, we'll find out which, uh, when I start writing these tests again, we'll find out what we need import wise. This looks like it's, oh, I'm in a migration thing, whoops. I don't wanna do that. Careful, 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 careful. So migrations can have brain tree references and then, cool. Cool, 3600. Okay, so we should maybe have fewer failing tests, and at least I can run the or find no tests. That's the key thing. So in PayPal, let's write some tests now. Chat.openai.com. Log in real quick. We'll use the advanced data analysis plugin, which is essentially going to give us a Python interpreter built in so we can mm, parse code if needed. So I'm going to use a combination of ChatGPT and Copilot here, the Copilot chat, and just try to get our tests coverage pretty good. We've got a helper utility that's going to be monitoring our test coverage as well. But I know that I have to do PayPal first thing because this is all fresh code. Some like two views that we want to test. And some kind of I need to fix those minutes. I'll probably just test all of these just for the aggregate, have the coverage, and sort of state explicitly my how I expect it to work. You know, it's kind of implicit in the code here. I'm going to take a quick break and get some tea started, and we'll dig into the um, the test functions in just a moment. All right, we got some tea going in the background. Earl Grey Deluxe. Now, what we'll do is uh, make sure this stays open, and we will import from PayPal, and we'll import all the things. Get off token, construct PayPal headers, create order. Now if it doesn't, uh, if it's like a data class or something that doesn't have any kind of capture order functionality to it, get subscription. Probably will omit it from the tests. Subscription is active. PayPal error, currency code, PayPal amount, PayPal purchase unit. I don't think those, I don't know, maybe they, maybe somebody wiser than me would know why or how to test those. They're fairly static though. So I think I'm gonna focus on the dynamic, dynamic stuff. In no particular order, I should find if there's a good particular order. Uh, I wish we'd sort mine on our project at work wheel. Ruff will sort these for us, but I think it's complaining first that it's not accessed, then that it's unsorted. We'll come back to that. Well, the author, and I think these are maybe a little bit isolated. So the thing is that I've got a function like this. I'm gonna tell this to ChatGPT, and I need to mock the response I'll just give the function, boom. I set it from external dependencies. 
like the paper API, you can use Django's test case along with the mock library to achieve this. Here's a basic example. Now, I think we already have a mock uh, unit test import mock one. Oh, I did that. Well, we'll grab these imports. We have the test case there, so we'll take that. Look, this is already sorted from my module. Got the imports here. And two classes. Yeah, I mean, granted, as of late, I've been writing code to a large extent with Copilot. Nonetheless, it does represent work, and work that's kind of thrown away. Wasted. Time wasted. I'll have to say keep TB next time, because we're not actually interacting with the database. All right, so then we got some things here, actually. Oh, right, right, right. Copy paste school without even thinking. PayPal.paypal. Keep DB. Let's continue. And T is ready. I'll get some fresh right away. Excellent. Hey, tests succeeded. <laughs> Very cool. Tests pass. We'll commit these a little bit at a time, just in case I get tangled up, which is prone to happen. Like I said, this pull request is a uh, fairly high risk to do such a big change, such a massive change, including unbundling and things like uh, <clears throat> dependencies and stuff, uh, updates and things like that. I'm just in a hurry, prone to make some errors here. I don't know if test suite is necessary. Three tests. All right, continue. Create order to print. Shoot. Yeah, let's move this over to PayPal orders. I'm going to rearrange this just a little bit, which means I'm going to have to fix my imports. PayPal, PayPal is a bit like, yeah, I was just getting it done at that point. Capture order, create order. Util is pi. At least we'll have slightly more meaningful structure. That would be constants, I guess. All right, then we'll figure out where I'm using, where I'm importing these. No, it's not actually that much. It's fairly high. Yeah, this was mostly... I need to fix those imports. Uh, I don't know if I need the constants, but... Stage all of these. Then stage everything else except tests. And this is to add... Whoa! Nice! I didn't notice what event triggered that. Testing out the emoji bombs. Hey, Rix, welcome to the chat. Did you, did you just trigger that emoji bomb? That was pretty cool. I think it should show a little other notification. Maybe I'll make them, <laughs> I'll try to make them so they don't overlap so I can see what's going on. Cool, all right, so what do we do here? Ah, yes, yeah, so I need this currency code probably to live in, there's utils, I think, where we were using that. Next to that, all right, so we have default currency code here. What has to come after, okay, that is the way it is. I think we're using it here, and then where are we using the project that is? All right, so that should have us all sorted out with our dependency graph, so we don't have a circular dependency. That's where I can run this test. All right, can I import construct PayPal headers from PayPal constants? No, that was the wrong one. What line of code was that? Yeah, that was utils. I took this one module, just PayPal.PayPal, .paypal, that had everything in there, and I split it out into a couple of other little files just to make it easier <laughs> to see how the app is organized here uh, we have some things relating to subscriptions and orders tests utilities and views i don't know a little bit cleaner and i'm going to fix imports anything here there was this line is the main one that changed so now we'll just say add very cool so I got this pull request on GitHub, where it's quite massive. But let's take a look here. I'll push up the changes here to GitHub. If you'd like to check it out, PR number 907. Mostly removing lines, but switching over the payment processor. Very cool. And using ChatGPT as a helper. So we've written tests for these utilities. Let's move into the order creation flow. And I'll close out. All of these for now, except tests, and I'll reopen the ones that are relevant as we test them. So we will open the orders file, which I think I can just do like that. Orders pi, and it's the same request. Essentially, now that I've prompted it a few times, it's kind of got the context of what we're trying to achieve in this session. Uh, we're writing unit tests, we're in the Django framework, 
we're calling the pi uh sorry the pi paypal api so we need to kind of mock that it's able to infer my module structure now i don't think i told it that that was interesting oh yeah i uh, yeah so interestingly i misspoke and mid-sentence decided to <laughs> refactor the code i think moving things out of paypal paypal into better namespaces and so then ChatGPT picked up on that and it's kind of got the correct patches here uh we might want to handle the failure cases that's good advice let's just start with the success case p format and i wish i could just run the single test i think i can if you just say paypal like that one test but by clicking a button the test runner lets you just click the button but only supports like pi test and unit test okay we got a failure can i import name construct paypal auth headers from paypal constants so either i didn't fix them big grief charlie brown from paypal utils fix import let's see if we can run that oops and keep db though so we don't have to kind of wait for it to build a test database when we're not even interacting with the test uh, with the database so that worked wow so what i'm thinking is what should we do mm. in the test case in the failure case well we can take a look here i don't have any validation i literally just passed the um response to the calling context so this is probably where we'll have the have the uh, yeah when we test this view paypal view create PayPal, paypal order that's where we'll have the failure case all right makes sense my paypal wrapper just basically abstracts the http call i suppose i could move that raise for status here and then put a try catch but i thought i would just use the yeah, I'm on the fence about it. This will raise what? I don't also know. This is coming out of the requests. So if we look here. So I'm just kind of saying, should this HTTP be isolated in the service layer? Um, and I return some kind of a explicit class out of here, or like a data class or something. The architecture how much should it be encapsulated so i think the current setup where in the view i'm calling this response is coupling the business logic with the paypal http mm, or okay so this is Let's see, it's interesting. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think it will go with this sort of info. Interesting. Now, there's no very specific exception I'm handling there. All right, well, let's take a look at this. So I'm going to move the raise for status out of this. And instead, call it here from the response. Makes sense. Then we'll return the response JSON. Then, now we're you're working with subscription orders here, back to the view. We will create this data class. It's literally just one field we're returning. Now we're still kind of coupling to the PayPal response. But introducing an intermediary thing. Oops. Here's the tricky part. I don't really know the structure of the PayPal response. They don't have a PayPal library, uh, Python library anymore. So create an order, the response. I think it's just ID then. So here's the request details. Well, tell me about the response. Order details. Here we are. ID. Cool. Basically the whole thing. All right. This is. Probably more than I need right now, but it's just ID. So let me just first start with the try, catch, try, accept. We'll come back to this in just a moment. Return JSON response. We'll see if I need that in a moment. Forget the house for you where to put these. HTTP status. All right. Two oh one. HTTP status. I'm just gonna type this so it goes into my muscle memory.
Uh, it's a little bit better, and we don't have it as HTTP. It's just, it's just. Your status created is the 201, right? Literal value 201. That's what we're after. So we created the order. Exception. But this is in the same boat if we're, oh, we're logging it. Can I implement transformer from scratch? What kind of a transformer, Ravi? Welcome to the chat. Let's ask GPT. <laughs> Let's do it in a fresh chat. I don't want to spoil the context. New chat. Advanced data analysis. What kind of transformer? What are you transforming? Like a mapping function? Language model. Oh, <laughs> no, I don't do that level of, I don't have the computing resources to do that. Uh, let's even try that, let's see. Let's try it with the Python. How can we implement a, an LLM transformer from scratch using Python? All right, so you'll need Python 3, NumPy, maybe PyTorch or TensorFlow for GPU acceleration. I have a GPU, but I'm running Linux, so half the time it doesn't work. <laughs> it's weird. It does, it always works, but sometimes it doesn't work in weird ways. It's like my OBS sometimes can't use GP accelerate, uh, U acceleration. So yeah, it would look like this. You import your stuff. We define it at, uh, the building blocks and attention mechanism. Give it some heads. Whoa, they can have multiple heads. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit frustrating, the GPU problem, isn't it? Uh, Multi-headed attention. And then it does some uh, nins from Torch, neural nets, some linear, a few of those. And here's a transformer block, has a certain amount of tension and some normalization functions. And then you define a feed forward net, so it's a sequential linear and ReLU and another linear. Configure the dropout, boom, to find a transformer model. There you go. That seems like a recipe you could follow. If you want, I can share this with you. Share the chat. Copy link. Here you go. Enjoy. Let me know if you, what you build with that. And use it for good, not evil. Seriously though. All right, so let's get back to PayPal. I need to use the restroom and refresh my tea, but uh, enjoy checking out that uh, LLM transformer from scratch. All right, continuing, uh-oh, my chat went over, there we are. Continuing with this refactor, another refactor. I'm not accessing it, but we might want to log this. Import logging, okay, logger name is fine. Logging, import that. Logger, so this is an exception, I suppose I would do that. Here we go. And it's a, it is a server error, 500. It is abstracts the details of the Python error, uh, PayPal error, but logs it to something that I can use. I'm thinking about maybe using Datadog. Actually, we have Sentry set up, and we're on like the nonprofit tier or the open source tier of Sentry, so that might be a good way to investigate. Something went wrong, checking access. I expected to end up JSON. Okay, maybe it's my GPU. Messing up my JSON parser. Uh, yeah, two uncreated uh, print statement. Generic exception, you're also catching programming errors like name error or syntax error. So it might be, make debugging difficult. Okay, okay. Something did happen. Some error did occur. Generally, we don't want to catch just generic errors. I should have special cases, but given the nature of this code, it's sort of reaching out to an API and although we're using the response uh, the requests library I don't know what the error space is here oh, HTTP error well, that's that yeah I don't want to be so hmm 
So it looks like the error space is HTTP error and PayPal error so far. This general exception will make my brain a little bit easier, make it easier on my brain. So let's continue with the tests. Now I know that since we are raising an error here in the orders, I will need to handle an HTTP error case. So let's see if Copilot kind of picks up on that failure. So this is Copilot, not GPT at this point. So it raises PayPal error, interesting. And this is probably the right thing to do here. Although I'm raising here the HTTP error. Ah, except HTTP error. So now we know this error case could be PayPal error or some other general exception, but not an HTTP uh, error at this point. So that's good. So this assertion should be good. And what I can do now is call create order test. Yeah, same. Two tests, two successful tests. Wow. Uh, yeah, so I get the positive and negative cases there. Sounds good. Let's refactor error handling. Synchronize these changes. Again, our pull request is here on Western friend, WF website project, pull request number 907, quite a large one. Now we'll still have these tests failing because outside of this PayPal app, uh, there's some tests I haven't gotten around to, but we're gonna continue. Now we've got create order tests. Let's write capture order tests, sweet. Uh, should I do the same thing here? Yeah, and I had not added, had I, I don't think I had the response raises. No, this is all new. So yeah, raising the response error at this layer seems like a good architecture. Now, given the following function, let's write a test suite for the following function. And let's see if it takes the suite part literally and gives me the positive and negative success and failure. Very cool. Format that. And for some reason, is now introducing mock and test case. Oops, that's why, because I'm putting it in the wrong file. Create order, capture order. So the create is a, before the person pays, you start, uh, you create an initial order placeholder. It's like a payment intent, and then uh, should have some value associated with it. Then you capture it. So the value is already stored on PayPal. PayPal renders the form, handles everything out of band, so I can't manipulate the price at that point. And then we, the user is returned to our website after authorizing the payment. And then I call capture order. And I hope that's the correct one because I'm just kind of <laughs> testing nothing basically here. Capture order. Capture order. Create show order details. Update order. Confirm the order. Payment source, authorized payment footer. Where are we? Order. Come on. So I guessed it wrong. Or they're gonna be tracking all of this in PayPal. So I'm not gonna integrate this information into our system so much, but at least we should. Man, I guess completed is correct. Just highlight this text, stay on the screen. Don't. Oh man, the PayPal docs are just janky. PayPal development experience is janky. I don't like it. All right, we'll go with it though. So we've got these lint. And in the endpoint, then I'll just need to add exception handling. There's a capture PayPal order view. And we're raising for status here. I don't need to do that. I think everything is going to be on PayPal. They'll have the they're going to check it on PayPal. And this will be accept. I see, I did a generic one. That's right. So it's already a dictionary. Good. Now our test cases are increasing. Test coverage is increasing. Let's go ahead and, um, well, let me think here for a second. We have a little bit of uh, more code here in Python. Uh, I mean, in the PayPal library, subscriptions, for example. I want to be able to track these exception PayPal. It's 
it's gonna be a cascading. Yeah. So we'll start up here. Success and fail. Interesting that it's mocking the logger. <laughs> Is that necessary? I'm gonna try just commenting that out. And then our new test suite. This is a bit confusing. I mean, I commented them out, but uh, no, I see. Okay, I suppose we'll just. We do want to make sure logging works. I get it. That's interesting. Test case. In this case, we don't need it because we're not. Logger. Oh, and this is subscriptions which does have it which is kind of raising the question why doesn't orders have it and why aren't we logging here let's log here this is important for debugging and what we'll do is then in the tests again we'll mock the logger let's see we'll assert the logger was called let's run the whole suite to see how things are going utils well i'll just call this auth right one more refactoring from Django conf import setting. We just haven't tested that yet. Now this one we're using in several places from auth. And you know, I put it all in one module at the beginning just to sort of flesh out the idea. And now, you know, you can go back, I can come back around it and just uh, reorganize it a little bit. Yeah, PayPal, PayPal. So I just did this one again. Oh, I haven't saved these things. This is basically models, but it, then I have this constant that was in there, but it's like, I wanted to use this model and I got a circular dependency. It was kind of strange. Let me try moving this to constants now. Then I'll rename this models. I don't think we need it for this success. Nice. All right. So we got our tests back in good shape. More refactoring, but essentially this, you know, this PayPal module has, you know, authentication part and we've got some constants we're sharing. Now, this is interesting. The Django models are different than these data models. So delete that. See if, yeah, Django gets too tripped up on this, but these are models, these are API models, or not even that. But anyway, so we need to find utils dot. So any place I'm importing, yeah, that'd be yours. I don't want to get too crazy with the refactoring. So we can just run it. Run everything, and what are we at? Almost two hours. I'm gonna go a little bit longer to two hours. However, I suspect it's a bit different. All right, did I add any tests here? I did. So let's go ahead and ref do the refactoring part, and then just kind of commit the changes. Stay these. Stage this. Control Shift K. Control K. Control Alt S. My fingers will get too confused. Final test is for this. So we're gonna have, oh, it's even testing the cache, miss. That's really cool. I'll take a quick break and be right back. Excellent. So yeah, there's quite a few tests here. We've got the cache hits and misses and not active and error, which should return a false. So if it's somebody, for example, you know, tries to game this system and passes us a, a fake subscription ID or something, that's fine. Uh, in that case, we'll want to cache the false result. So we'll, we'll run it against this module. Hopefully it'll just work. I would like to take a little bit of a break. Module named Python. Interesting. All right, let's see here. Uh, probably had a typo here. Yeah, you can see my brain is just a bit crazy. Mistake. I don't have to be too hard on myself. But yeah, it's, I'm getting confused. You know, I'm getting confused on simple words. My grammar is slowing. I'm getting crazy. I sort of blame the mixture of Finnish and English grammar, but nonetheless, I'm yeah seeing some cognitive decline. Cool, we've got subscription is active test. Wow, great. So we should have really good coverage here in the. Oops, cancel this. Yeah, just add and 
push this up in the Python module. We'll have a re little report, a coverage report up here that gets updated every time I run that. Ah, we'll have some lint. Let's just get the lint stuff off. Format that constants. Format this because I was moving stuff around. I didn't pick here. The lint orders, constant descriptions. That's it. These are all just linting. Hmm. There it goes. One, two, three, four. Lint. Luckily, my tool the IDE uh, will take care of that for me and then the tool will remind me when that happens so we don't have to like make a big deal out of linting. Let's see, where's our coverage checker? Oh, Sonar Cloud is so noisy. Coverage up here. All modified and coverable lines are covered by tests by Sentry. Yeah, I like this Sentry organization and they've acquired CodeCo. Yeah, so I think this is a good stopping point. Just for reference, you know, there's a lot of tests that will still be failing. Just run all the tests. We'll just take a quick look before I take a break. Yeah, we can destroy the test database. And that'll essentially be the work. When I return, I'm just going to go for a walk or something. Enjoy the daylight before the sun goes down around 4 o'clock here in Finland. <laughs> it's pretty early sunset in the winter months. Yeah, and then I'll come back and... The goal is this weekend I'll have all the tests fixed or removed. Adding tests that, you know, remove the ones that are no longer relevant, add the ones that are missing then for the new data model. Yeah. Fix the broken ones that still remain where just the implementation is different now. For example, looking for a template, strings and things like that. Overall pretty good. And we just have a few you know, subscription related tests for the template rendering and redirecting to the login page. Uh, I'm surprised that changed, but okay. So yeah, we'll just go through these one at a time, you know, just find the test suite and particular test um, function, tackle it, get this coverage up to date, merge this pull request. I hope this weekend, and that way I can give the editor a heads up that it's now available to test on the staging site. We can kind of copy and paste the, the live subscription details over to the new subscription page. Great. This has been another live code hangout. Thanks for everyone who stopped by. Rick and Ravi, welcome. And it's nice to have people to chat with. Ravi, good luck on your adventures of learning about transformers and perhaps implementing one from scratch in Python. And Ravi, thanks for the subscribe or whatever triggered the emoji bomb. All right, have a great day.